Hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm on the second part of my VHS opening, so I'll just get this music up ready, running, as soon as I combine it all in Sony Vegas. Now, the first tape I had I'm on this second row is the Rugrats movie, released in 1998, distributed by Paramount, and produced by Nickelodeon Movies and Klasky Chupo. It was my favourite films of all time. Yep, distributed by CIC Video. Let's have a look inside a tape. You know, uh... Yep, here's a tape of that. Surprised that they have done it in... an anti-clockwise thing. Well, the thing about this film is it has the episode The Family Tree because it basically it sets up the plot for the episode. But despite it not being showing up on US tapes or Australian tapes, it wouldn't make much sense, would it? But anyhow, take a look on the uh, bright side. I have the sequel, and it's Rugrats in Paris the movie, released in 2000. Yep, distributed by the same companies and produced by the same production companies as well. Also, my favourite films of all time, yes. Yep, distributed by Paramount Home Media Distribution. Here is the tape, done in its same style. As you can see here. Also, my... This is really is... These two are my favourite films to my childhood. Now, next up on the Paramount video collection is, you know, the preschool sh shows that I enjoyed when I was a toddler, and it's Blue Clues. Riven and Blue, yes. This is the first Blue Clues video that I've been, that I've watched when I was a toddler. Re re yes, it's been produced by Nick Jr but still released under the Nickelodeon brand. So let's have a look at the tape, shall we? Yep, here's the tape label, Riven and Blue. Now here's the uh, the latest Blue's Coos video, Blue's Discoveries, and it's November 2001. That's how I got it, the tape. The first copy I had, Yep, it has the same... Well, I ordered this tape, despite I did not know what happened to my previous copy. So here it is, River and Blue's Discoveries. The late... I don't think it was the latest, but... I'll probably have a look on the internet anyway. Yep, released by Nick Jr. under the Nickelodeon brand. Let's take a look at the tape. No point of just having a look on the inside cover because plainly it shows nothing as I remember from when I was a toddler. Here's the tape label. There you go. Right. Moving on. From the Paramount thing and it's and let's move on to the Columbia Tri-Star Collection. And that is, you know, uh, Madeline. Released in 1998. Featuring Francis Bardormo, the Nigel Hawar throne. Or the late Nigel Hawar throne. And Hattie Jones. Yep. Released by Tri-Star Pictures. Which is clearly ironic, despite knowing that I've actually wrote the word Tri-Star on the tape label. And on the here, <laughs> inside <laughs> case of it. Call me, call me a lunatic, but I have a thing of autism when I was a child. But don't blame me. That's how childhood works, I'm afraid. Now let's move on to one at home video. And that is. Fairy Tale, a true story. Yes, it was distributed by Paramount in the America, 
But it was distributed by Icon Pictures and released through the Warner Home Video brand. Yep. It's pure magic and it's actually based on the true story that I think. So here's the tape. As you can see, it's released under the Warner Home Video brand. You can tell by its tape label and its brand, Warner Brothers Family Entertainment. Now, moving on, let's take a look at the 2003 and its Carablanca, a, a parody of Warner Brothers' original film, Casablanca, which has some references from the original film as well. And believe me, one of Brothers' theme, as time goes by, serves as the main thing for its opening logo. And it has six episodes on there. And it runs around 42 minutes, which so is nearly qu three quarters of an hour. Let's take a look in the inside tape. Yep, here's the tape and its hologram. So we'll just okay. Let's move on to the Disney section, and that is Disney's latest hit, The Lion King, winner of two Oscars. It was Disney's best successful animated films of all time because it was actually inspired from uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. Loved this film when I was a child. So here's the tape label, and here's the inside advertisements. Here we are, The Fox and the Hound, and The Nightmare Before Christmas, the non-Disney film. But Touchstone is owned by Disney, so technically it isn't non-Disney. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't know. But it was really re-released by Walt Disney Pictures in the 2000s. Let's take a look at the Lion King sequel, The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Released by Disney Toon Studios and pr produced by Walt Disney Television Animation. Yep, loosely inspired from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is how I recall. Let's take a look inside the tape cover. Here's the tape label. I'll just take this out. Here is the uh, inside cover advertisement. Mulan available on Autumn 99 and Pocahontas 2 Journey to the New World. Yeah, both are set to come in, in Autumn. Now let's move on to the preschool series, shall we? And that is the animal shelf, Stripey to the Rescue. It came from my grand from the uh, grandparents' house, it, and it has five episodes on there. Surprise! It was the only tape, I imagine, that did not have the closed captioning thing on there. Well, anyhow, let's have a look at the tape. Here's the tape of it, done in that exact style, and here's the advertisement. You know, Winnie the Pooh's most grand adventures and Sesame Street. Now, let's move it on to the next part of Disney's classic collection before I move the other tape, and that is Disney's 47th feature film, Tarzan, based on Edgar Rice Burroughs' novel. Yep, it was actually a greatest hit, I think. Oh yes, I, I enjoyed this film. I enjoyed it all. Again, I did have an original copy of this when I was a child, did not know what happened to it, so I basically ordered it 
back in my hands. Here's the tape of it, and here is the inside advertisement, Toy Story 2 and the Tigger movie. Now, before I move on to these lot, let me just move these tapes back so I can get to them better. Right, here we are. Some of them are mostly back. But anyhow, let's move on to the Universal and Steven Spielberg thing. And that, here is Steven Spielberg's greatest hit, Jurassic Park. Released in 1998 by Universal Studios and produced by Amblin Entertainment. Steven Spielberg directed this film and it was the greatest hit. Yes. I mean, most films of the past featuring dinosaurs were most likely done by stop motion or hand drawn, but this is, but with CGI, it's absolutely breathtaking. Here's the tape label. Here it is. My grandmother has the original 1994 video release of it, but. Well, openings of it is uploaded onto YouTube anyway, so I wouldn't bother looking for it. Here's the Lost World Jurassic Park. The sequel to the original Jurassic Park. Again directed by Steven Spielberg. And it's still got Jeff Goldblum and uh, Richard Attenborough in, from the uh, first Jurassic Park films. Yes, the film was released under the CIC video label. Let's open her up. There's a the tape label. I'll just take this tape back out. And, uh, here's the uh, inside of this tape, and you, s you see the uh, actors' name, actresses' names on there. As I was telling you, my grandmother did have the original copy. So, with, uh, with me gotten the 2001 video release of the original Jurassic Park film, I wouldn't bother looking for it. But I still enjoy the film anyway, no matter how which year it was released in. Here is the first Jura Jurassic Park film, Jurassic Park 3. And this is the first film not to be directed by Steven Spielberg. And that is... Uh, Joe Johnston. It features Sam Neill from the fir first Jurassic Park film. Yep, mm, J Joe Johnston is the director of Jumanji. And Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah, here's the tape label with its hologram. Now, let's move on to the 20th Century Fox section. Let's take a look at the, uh, the Star Wars uh, trilogy. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Yes. Released after The Phantom Menace. Me, I should think it was a great film. Yeah, that was a terrible Jar Jar Binks impression I did. <laughs> Actually. Sorry, my hand is getting a little aching and sweating, but bear with me, guys. Love this film. It's sequel to The Phantom Menace. Here's a tape label. Huh. Imagine if I didn't watch the rest of the Star Wars film, George Lucas is going to change them again. Now let's move on. Let's take a look at the fifth element. This is the real t retail copy that I've had, that I just ordered from there. I did not know at the time what happened to the rental one, but it was clear that I actually did find it 
at the uncle's house. For for all the start of the table was badly damaged anyway, but it was still okay. Covered with dust. That's what I meant. Let's have a look inside the tape. Here is the tape label. Yep, has the Pathé logo on. That's how I pronounce it, so... Respect. Now, let's move on to the BBC video section. Take a look from this library. And that is Wallets and Gromit in Nick Parts' A Grand Day Out. Produced by Urban Animation and the National Film and Television School. Yes, it did win an Oscar for, uh... Oh, I don't know. I'll have a look later on. Yes, Nick Park was the creator of Creature Comforts. Best known for his works, such as Chicken Run. And, um... The Curse of the Were Rabbit. Here is the tape label. Sorry about my shadow getting in the way. There's a tape label, and here's the inside tape of it. Now, here's the second Waltz and Gromit short film, and it's The Wrong Trousers. It won an Oscar. Yes, for Best Animated Short Film. Yes, it was. It was the best film I enjoyed in my life. And it's a closed captioned tape as well. Here is the inside cover of this tape. You may notice in my bedroom uh, what I actually uh, Imported from the wrong trousers is the Feathers Mogwar Wanted poster. As you can see up here. Yeah, but I've done it all on the computer. So, anyhow, let's move on to the third Wallace and Gomez short film, and that is A Close Shave. Clearly, it did win an Oscar for this. I bet these stop motion films are really getting popular now. Here's the tape of that and the inside cover. Yep, that's the inside cover. Now, I did not put enough songs on this uh, music track, so I'm just going to have to do the rest of the, uh, the VHS collection reviews in, si in total silence, but with my speech. Quite outstanding that I actually have to move these tapes around in order to get to the back. Anyway, here is the next part in the BBC video collection. It is the greatest BBC children's video ever, released in 1995. It has many episodes of these are BBC owned shows on there. Here is the tape and, uh, and the inside cover. I'm not going to go through this quickly because I've got all the time in the world. Here 
here is the BBC Children's Sensational Summer Foam. Yep, which I ordered so I can enjoy the summer with. Keep in mind that most, that post humans aged 11 or 15 or 20 or adults still enjoy children's TV shows independently. I can tell that's a really bad job of placing the uh, logos up on there. I bet the uh, printing crew really did a very bad job on this. But I am convinced that it, but it was okay on the rest of the VHS covers. Here's the tape label and the inside cover which is exactly the same as my previous one. Now, here's the BBC television children's favourites. Yep, it has all of the TV shows I enjoy. Released in 1993. And so far it has... Um, 10 episodes on there. Just over an hour. Here is a tape. Here is a tape and the inside cover, which is far different from the from the 1995 ones. Now here is a 1997 BBC video release, and its postman pad has too many parcels. You know, I ordered this tape from eBay because I enjoyed Postman Pat when I was well when I was a child that is and it was this year when I ordered it you could tell it's actually that you know the bottom you know the information thing of this cover is actually different because it was released in 1997 and you can tell it's actually uh, Done in 1997, or after October, apparently. Uh, sorry about this that tape case being so stubborn to open, but you know. Now here's the tape label. Now, you know the reason why it has the, uh, the current BBC logo on there, because it is released after October. That's how... And that's how the BBC rebranded their uh, icon. Now here's the tape. Here is the tape cover, which is stay the same. Absolutely. Okay. Now let's go over to Crinkly Bottom with with Mr. Blobby. You know from Noel Edwin's house party. The host of it will now go on to our uh, deal or no deal. She can broadcast it on Channel 4. I enjoyed this video when I was a child. I enjoyed it. I laughed my head off. <laughs> here's the info. And here is Noel Edmund's signature on there. <laughs> really uh, fabulous. <laughs> here is the tape of it. But still, you can tell it has a different VHS case because you can because it just changed to, you know, to come in contrast with the character. Now let's go back into the Nickelodeon section with SpongeBob SquarePants, which is tied in seek. You know, yes. I can feel like that most of times. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I love Squidward. Here is the episode list on there, released in two thousand and three. Right. But it was, but it was actually a reprint in two thousand and five, I presume. I don't think I remember correctly. Here is the tape cover. I mean, here is a tape label of it. 
As you can see, most of it has already faded. I don't know. Right, back into the Columbia TriStar session with Roald Dahl's Matilda. Yeah, directed by Danny DeVito, who did the act, who acted as Harry Wormwood and the narrator. And it starred Mauro Wilson, Pam Ferris, and Rhea Parman and Edward Davids. Yeah. Based off Roald Dahl's children's book. Yes. You know, I really enjoyed this film as well. But what's more important about this film is that it's dedicated to Mara Wilson's mother, Luke, Susie Wilson, who died of brain cancer when the film was being made. And we'll all remember Susie Wilson. Here is a tape label which is far different than the 1997 ones because, you know, the word is actually that small and condensed when it was made. And here, and tape label is really different as well. Because because it has really it has the uh, 1997 advertisements thing cover in there, but you know for 2001 it's actually it's actually way different. But the outside cover it stayed the same apparently. Now let's move on to, back to the urban section, but into the Pathy and DreamWorks section as well. Then it's Chicken Run, produced by Nick Nick Park and Peter Lord, the creators of Wallace and Gromit. Yes, I enjoy this film so much. You know the success of this film is actually so good that you know the members of the Oscar might as well just um just create a new category for the best animated film and here's the tape label yes it's customized the next DreamWorks film and you know the DreamWorks animation film to win that first ever Oscar for best animated feature film was Shrek as you can see here I'm going to have to do this in chronological order for those two films over there. So I'm going to start with Dennis, actually called Dennis the Menace. But it was shortened to Dennis to avoid confusion with the comic strip of the same name. So here's the spine. And here's the back cover. You know, I really love this John Hughes film. Because it's actually because I laughed my head off. Here is the uh, tape label, and here is the family entertainment section. It has a secret garden, Free Willy, Willy Wonka, Rover, Dangerfield, L Lois and Clark, The Goonies, and Quackbusters. These are just examples. So I'll just put these back. And moving on to its sequel, the directed video released in 1998, and it's Dennis Strikes Again. Actually called Dennis the Menace Strikes Again, but again to avoid confusion with the comic strip of the same name. Here's the spine. And here's the back cover. Convinced to know that it was actually that that John Hood did not even in, got involved with this. Nick Castle did direct the first film, but John Hughes produces it. And here is the tape label of it. So, this film, along with The Magic Sword, Quest for Camelot, is released the exact same year as Warner Brothers celebrated its 75th anniversary. Here's all of that. Here's the back row of this collection done. And now, to put these five back. I'm going to 
have to do this. Guys, I'm really sorry. You know, both hands are going to have to be used for this. Okay, that's me, your uh, VHS collection in the wardrobe in interviewed or my review. I will uh, see you guys in the next video.